With the introduction of USB Type-C, this little cable can be plugged into so many different devices. Phones, laptops, tablets, speakers, keyboards, mouse, gamepad controllers, monitors, power banks, wireless chargers, test fans, gaming consoles, and so many more. That is amazing since ideally we can just use one single charger and one single cable for everything. But that is where things get confusing because out of all of those devices that I've listed so far, the power requirement for those devices ranges from a mere 0.5 watts all the way up to, well, whatever power limit that they want to use. There is just no one charger out there that you can go out and buy and expect it to work with every device out there in the world. I've seen so many people posting on Facebook groups asking why their new chargers don't fast charge their phones only to be disappointed. That is because of how complicated chargers really are. They might look like any other chargers out there in the market, but under the hood, they are very different. So in today's video, we're going to break it down and understand why chargers are so complicated. Let's backtrack a little. We have a charger included in the box of whatever we buy back in the years. Buying a phone, then you get a charger inside. But for some reason, that is most probably because their phones is using some bullshit proprietary chargers, just like Sony Ericsson's with its multi-pin thing or those Nokia phones with whatever barrel jack size that they have left in stock at the time. Nowadays, some phone manufacturers don't even include the charger in the phone, but some phone manufacturers still do. The latter group makes sense because those phone manufacturers is most probably pushing their whatever fast charging technology and hence they will have to include a charger in the box so that we, the customers, can experience it on our own. And when it comes to fast charging technology, we need a total of three things to make it work. First, we need a charger that supports the fast charging, obviously, and then we also need the phone that supports that fast charging technology. And one more part of the equation is actually the cable itself and that cable also needs to support that fast charging technology. I can give you a few examples right now. So Oppo's VOOC fast charging only work with their own charging brick, cable and phone. With that said, not all Oppo phones will support the same VOOC speeds. There are multiple of different versions of it and some are faster, some are slower but most probably they are not 100% cross compatible. Realme uses the same fast charging technology as Oppo, hence some Realme phones are able to use VOOC charging brakes to fast charge their phones as well. Huawei also has its own fast charging technology as well. So Huawei users will need to use Huawei's own charging brake, cable and also phone to fast charge their device obviously. But if we plug in a Huawei phone into an Oppo VOOC charger, then that Huawei phone will not fast charge. This is what I mean by charging standards aka protocols. Each company has its own unique way of achieving fast charging. That is why Huawei phones cannot fast charge using Oppo's VOOC charger and vice versa. But the USB Implementers Forum, a non-profit corporation that standardizes how USB works, has something called USB PD, also known as USB Power Delivery. I won't go into details about how USB PD really works and to keep it simple, this is just a fast charging standard developed by USB IF that any other company can use, be it Apple, Intel, Samsung, Huawei, Oppo, Acer, Asus, ViewSonic, Dell, and even you can implement it on your own device if you're designing one and plan to sell it in the market. Just like what we described earlier, to use USB PD, we need a total of three things. A USB PD compatible charger, a USB PD compatible cable and also a USB PD compatible device. However, the cable here is a bit special because we need the cable to support whatever wattage that we want to use. If not, then the cable will melt itself. Since USB PD is such an open standard, we can quick charge different phones that uses USB PD. For example, uh, we can quick charge a laptop using just one charger and then when the laptop has charged completely, we can use back the same cable and charger to quick charge our phone that is also compatible with USB PD. That is amazing! And the USB PD standard is constantly pushing the boundaries too. The latest version of USB PD 3.1 also supports up to 240 watts of power. That means high-end gaming laptops can fully embrace charging via USB Type-C as well. 
that can be a possibility and I really hope that comes to a reality. But we do have a few problems in our hands right now. You see, the USB IF doesn't have a good track record when it comes to standardizing stuff. They themselves have become a villain where they literally f everyone up by first renaming USB 3.0 to USB 3.1 Gen 1 and then the same speed to USB 3.2 Gen 1. Those names are all referring to the same 5 gigabits per second throughput. And the USB IF never enforced cable manufacturers to label what wattage that cable is supported. You see, a USB cable that supports 65 watts and another USB Type-C cable that supports 100 watts look identical. However, they are just different in terms of whatever wattage they can carry. Of course, the 65 watts cable cannot carry up to 100 watts, hence you cannot charge your device using that cable if you want to charge a laptop that supports 100 watts, for example. To the average consumer, this could baffle someone to oblivion and blame the device manufacturer instead even though those device manufacturers did nothing wrong. And this is exactly what's happening with the Pixel 6. That phone just straight up refuses to charge if you're using a low quality cable. And one more thing, earlier when we mentioned that you need a total of 3 things to make fast charging work, uh, we also mentioned that you need the device to support fast charging standard. That in itself is actually separated into two parts. The first one is the charging IC. Throughout my time reviewing stuff on this channel, we came across multiple different devices and for me, I always use my own charger and cable because I don't want any clutter on my desk. What I then realized is that some devices can only be charged using a 5 volt charger, those 5 volts 1M or 2M chargers, and it doesn't accept anything higher. For example, the LensGo microphone that we reviewed, that thing explicitly states that it only charges using 5 volt chargers. And same goes to the mechanic wireless mouse as well. That is because the charging IC, that little circuit board that handles the power that it receives from the charger, doesn't support USB PD. What baffles me is that during one of our review of the Studio Femtio speakers, we had two speakers at the time. One grey colour and one, was it in black colour or something like that? I can't really remember. And I was charging it using my trusty Ugreen Gun charger that supports USB PD standards. However, the gold color can support that gun charger, but the black color it can only be charged using that 5 volt charger that I have lying around. And the second part of the equation is actually in terms of the software side of things. This is primarily for phones actually. We have some phones like Samsung that can disable fast charging out in the settings menu, and many phones don't. For example, the Xiaomi 11T Pro with the 120 watts charger. It doesn't actually take in full 120 watts for the entire duration of your charging time. As you can see in this graph here, it can actually be split into three different tiers. We can see that at lower battery percentages, it charges extremely fast. Then at a certain threshold, it slows down. And then eventually the charging speed starts to just taper off. That is all controlled by software. We also had a weird issue that we cannot pinpoint if it's either due to software or hardware. You see, ASUS has laptops that comes with 100 watts USB Type-C chargers. So in our minds, we can just use our random 100 watts UV and gun charger to charge the laptop, right? Well, turns off, no, because when we plug it in, it just says charging slowly. I have no idea why this happens and it happened twice actually. The first time is with the ROG Flow X13 and secondly is with the Zenbook 14X UEUX 5400E. Okay, so this entire video seems to be a rant or an info dump. However, I don't see how we can easily explain this without diving into the difficult technicalities and whatnot. There are many things that seem to be unrelated but they are actually an integral part of the charging experience, like the cable for example. And the reason why I'm doing this video is because in a video by Swell Entertainment where she reviewed Manscaped Ball Shavers, yes, don't question why I watch these videos, she found out that the included charger of the Manscaped Ball Shaver can actually charge her iPad and the excitement on her face was just golden. <gasps> yes! And she described the entire situation the best way possible. I like when you can use things for other things. And I also have to thank this guy for holding us accountable since we did promise to make a video like this a few months ago. And sorry it took so long because it just 
has a lot of information that we need to finalize. And so after testing so many different devices, which charger do I actually recommend? Well, I'll go for the Ugreen 4 port 100 watts scan charger and I gotta be transparent with you guys. Ugreen did send us the charger for free but they don't have any input in terms of our content and this video is hashtag not sponsored. I just love the charger and its versatility and it supports a lot of different fast charging standards and yet it has a total of 4 ports. That means it can help me clean my table as well. There are other brands of chargers such as Energy, Basius, Anchor, yada yada, I don't know, there are just way too many brands and I think if they work like what they claim on the box, then it should work fine. And as for cables, I don't really have any recommendation for you. My best bet is that you guys can actually go get a Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4 cable. They are expensive, but those cables will work with whatever wattages that you want. But if you want to get some cheaper alternatives, then I think you can just quick search for whatever cable wattage that you want and hopefully it works. Still, there are many things that we've not talked about in this video, like how there are differences between traditional silicon-based chargers versus the new GAN chargers, the transfer speed between USB cables, yes, that's different as well, and how to identify all of these cables. They are very complicated. We'll leave all of that for another time, so let us know down in the comments below if you want us to make a video on that as well. And yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching everyone, and if you have any questions regarding charging, cable, phone, whatever else, then yeah, feel free to drop it down in the comment section below, and we'll see you guys in the next video.